Doing this lab, this is a horrible string to be using because it will, huh? it'll fray. I mean, eventually you'll get the spread of the string itself. Uh, you know. When I filmed the video of this of this lab when we went into lockdown, probably it was the lab I cut the most profanity out of. <laughs> I got overly ambitious and it was just string broke, fully popped off. Hard the thread to pull it. Was that? Hard the thread to pull it. It is at the moment, but that was not the problem when I shot the video. Right down the middle. There we go, pop it out the other side. Do you have a YouTube of this? Yep, yeah, I do have a YouTube video of this. What did it call so I can... Uh, probably vibrating... Oh! String vibrator lab. Okay. Actually, it doesn't say lab, it just says string vibrator. Yeah, so... With the stuff I produced on, on YouTube, I can sometimes take a look at what people searched on and when they found it. And I found some really strange searches. People obviously looking for porn and came across my videos and clicked on them. Uh, and I'm thinking, well, why on earth does this happen? And then I realized, so if I design a lab that is specifically for 250, physics 252, I'd write THY 252 at the beginning. If it works for 252 or 152, I'd write X52. If it works for any of my classes, I either write all or PHY XXX. And then this one doesn't even have the word lab in it. It's PHY XXX string vibrator. So I'm hitting two key words there. <laughs> <laughs> and I started to change the name, and then I thought, no, if someone's on YouTube looking for porn, you know what? They deserve a little education. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so oh, we need to turn this on. I can't imagine to tell you how what my surprise was when I walked back in here and heard that. <laughs> it, it's the other part of someone actually did clicking on the video that, that's the part that's going. The only thing I can think of is that they were clicking on something else and suddenly the screen jerked and they hit that one. There we go. All right. It's obviously moving. Uh, the one the big downside of the movie is that this is vibrating at 60 cycles a second. The filming, I think, was also roughly at some multiple of 60 as well. 
And so it looks like the string's not moving at all. Uh, yeah, the frame rate matches the uh, yeah. frequency. Yeah. And so there are a couple places where I, you know, just so that you can actually hear it vibrating. So as I apply tension, so right now there's not much tension in it. The force due to gravity is a significant, it does have a significant factor there. But as I increase the tension, You can see it vibrates. Mm. Yep. I can't see it at all. Okay. Let's see, see if it I have enough coordination like this. I don't know if it's yellow. Yeah. Right, you can't see it? It's kind of blends out the white. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. See it right there? Well, now I can see it. Selena, you seen it? Yeah. All right. Now, as I apply tension to it, actually, as I reduce tension on it, no. second harmonic right there. I lost it. You got two harmonics. It's the second harmonic. Right. Reduce the tension a little bit more. Got a third harmonic right there. Got a second harmonic again. It's not easy to keep that steady. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this a little bit differently. Let's see if I tie that off to so that the tension will stay constant. And I'm going to change the frequency. Now changing the frequency is not going to change the speed of the wave. Because the speed of the wave is dependent upon the rope itself, it's dependent upon the tension and the linear density, that's not changing by changing the frequency. What is gonna change is the wavelength. And so I can get different harmonics this way though, just by changing the wavelength. For the first harmonic, that was basically half a wave there because I just had one anti-node in the middle. A full wave looks like this. That's a full wave. The first harmonic is just half of that. So the wavelength for the first harmonic is basically twice that distance. The second harmonic looks like this. A shorter distance. That dis so we need a shorter distance there. Third harmonic, the wavelength is basically two thirds of that. So by changing the wavelength, by altering the frequency, I'm changing the wavelength and hopefully get the harmonic right. To the box. I need a plug to go into the black box up on top. Yeah, that's got. You have to have some kind of I know it. I frequency going there. This is the cord that, oh, that goes into there. This, I've set this up before. I feel like I'm missing a cord.
I need the power going to this coming to you the the output of the other vibrator got to go, the cord got to go from there to the, uh, to whatever output that comes, got to go into the other box. Right, right. No, I got that part. It's, I've got these ports in the back. This is the power cord for this. Where's your That's output cord? cord that I'm not... And I have set this up before and it is not happening. Right. This does not have another plug. The only plug this has is this right here. So the other end of that is there. Yeah, this is the power to this. Set tension in there, so now I should be able to adjust the frequency. Let's uh, see, first harmonics. Uh, that's a third harmonic there. So this has two dials. One is sort of a, the gross tuning right here. And you get close and then use the fine, finer tune, trying to get that maximum amplitude. Let's actually crank the amplitude up a little bit. Looks like it's getting smaller there. So that would be, it's close to a third harmonic right there. What I'm looking for is this, I want this to be a node right here. So if I, did the, the gross manipulator there. It's hitting, it's sort of pitching up around about here, and so I'm trying to get it to go a little bit further. Too far. Basically do it till it's big enough. So I have a third harmonic there. If I reduce the frequency, Got a second harmonic there. Oh, there we go. That's a much better one. That's too, too far. Oops, hold it one way. Let's see if I get a first harmonic. <laughs> So I can adjust the frequency or I can adjust the tension. Uh, in theory, I could also just adjust the 
linear density of this, but that would be a different string. And I can't really adjust, actually, can I adjust the wavelength? I can't really adjust the wavelength at all without, the only way I would adjust the wavelength would be to adjust one of the other things. So anyway, string vibrator goes along with a string vibrator lab. Yeah, let's plan to do the string vibrator lab tomorrow. I'll, I'll post it before I go. We'll try to remember to. Oh, so we're going to do the lab tomorrow? Yeah. All right. But the one we did yesterday is not big until next week, right? Correct. Okay. <laughs> the one's the next one to one. Almost done. But <laughs> it's uh, the, the beauty of a half semester course is the fact that things are going to overlap. But, yeah, well, I'm yeah. Like sure. All right. So the first harmonic, so this is two fixed ends. First harmonic typically drawn like this. There's some length in the, some length here, L. And as mentioned before, that's a half a wavelength. So the length is equal to a half of a wavelength. Or the length is the half a wavelength. Therefore, the wavelength is just two times whatever that node to node distance is. This is known as the first harmonic. The second harmonic, the, sex of the next simplest one, again, the two fixed ends means I'm going to have to have two nodes at the ends. So two fixed ends, automatically I have nodes at the ends. The next simplest one is I'm going to add a half wave. It's supposed to be symmetrical. In this case, the wave L is equal to the wavelength, or the wavelength is equal to L. This is the second harmonic. The third harmonic. Well, how many waves is that? Just one wave, but it's cut up into thirds. Uh, not officially one wave. If that's a half a wave, and that's, that's a full wave. That's a third of a wave. Not a third one, of one. And a, one and a half waves. One and a half waves. Yeah. Or three half waves. But the wavelength is equal to two thirds times L. We'll do this. And that's the third harmonic. And then the next one. How many waves is this? Two waves. Yeah. Every time, and this is going to be true for the for the two fixed ends, the two free ends, or one fixed, one free end. Once you have the first harmonic, you're going to have to add a half wave each time to get the next overtone, which probably is better, best wording. So the wavelength, though, since that's two waves taking up this distance of L, a full wavelength would just have to be half that, or one half of L. That's the fourth harmonic. Now, although it does not really make a lot of sense here, it will make more sense for the next bit of language I'm going to use here. This could also be referred to as the first overtone, the second overtone, and the third overtone. Although typically those are used, that, that language is used more when dealing with sound waves.
add a note up here for the two fixed ends. The ends are those. Now there's a formula that your book gives. I think this is the one where I don't give the formula. Yeah. So there's a formula for characteristic frequencies given in the book. I am not going to give that to you. So just so you know, if you want to use it, then memorize it, but Well, that is equation 21.10. It's in the summary section. It's the last equation they give in the summary section. Of chapter 21? Of chapter 21. I'm not going to give that to you. And the reason why is there are going to be several different equations that look similar to that once we're done with 21 and 22. I find that the students who rely on those equations usually screw up that section of the test or quiz because they are too reliant on the three, there's gonna be three equations, they all look similar, and knowing which one to use, it basically takes away from thinking through what's actually going on here with what the harmonics are. The characteristic frequency equation? Yep, that's, that's the equation I'm not giving you. Okay. 